Houston has the nerve to speculate about her husband Shaq's masculinity in comparison to her father's masculinity. W T F. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say Shaq is an alpha male, but I don't see anything wrong with what Shaq has been giving forward. He's trying to understand his sister, and as a result, uh, he's going around in circles. Correct me if I'm wrong. Up until this point, Shaq had not met her father? No, he has not. Oh, okay. Just saying. Is the father real? Welcome to Cliff Alerts. Today, we're going to be talking about Lifetime Network's reality-based TV series, Married at First Sight, season number 16, episode number 14. To answer your question, I think so. But before we get into it, please like, share, and subscribe. I know I'm just clowning. I know you are. <laughs> you know, I, know you you I know you is. I know you is. We yet to see this father who did not show up at the wedding and all that other stuff. She keeps talking about the father. So tell it, sister. Anywho, thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you for sending us your comments and thank you for your support of this channel. Okay, Kristen. Yep. Um she has actually FaceTiming uh Shaq because he's out of town in Memphis at a conference, I believe. And Shaq looks salty. He doesn't look in, enthused. He looks like he got better things to do. And uh, later on, we find out why. And she wants to do the pretend game with the voice. And at one point, uh, she asked him when he's coming home. He hemmed and hawed about he doesn't know, yada, yada. It was like a strange conversation. And basically, we're watching two people who had had an argument or had a continuation of an argument going on. And when he was through, he, he closed the computer and she called him back to say, hey, I was blowing you some kisses. And he said, okay. <laughs> and he, he shut that down again. Or if he, we could have seen some of the thought bubbles that he had coming out of his brain at that moment, at that point in time, it might not have been nearly what she would have wanted to see. Hmm? Yeah. So um, they meet with Dr. Pia because this week we're talking about intimacy. And Dr. Pia sits down with them and they're talking about, you know, what they What's have. What's going on? And you know what Kirsten says right off the top? Things are great between us. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. All right. Well, that's not Th what Shaq said. Things are great between them from her perspective. Right. But he immediately checked her and uh, said, no, well, not so much. That's not what's happening. And her face changed. Countenance on her face, didn't it? No, yeah, it did. You know why that was? Uh, what it was is because... You know, she um, she wants to control the situation in the narrative. She was disappointed that Shaq didn't fall into line and support her in her effort to control the narrative. Exactly. So there's no coincidence that when Dr. Pia asked her um, if uh, she found that Shaq was masculine, she hemmed and she hawed and she hesitated. And then she said, well... Um, she had the nerve to say, yeah, but she didn't say it confidently. And not only that, too, but it left Shaq wondering, asking the question, well, damn, if if this is not a strong yes, then what has to happen? It's Carjacked violent, or so some, whatever, somebody's right? being violent towards us or you're getting you know, harassed or whatever before and I need to, somebody needs to see my hands before you then come to that point where you believe that you know, uh, I am masculine? And at one point he said, um, how much do I need to change? Because she keeps talking, attacking him with the father piece. And he is now saying, how much should I change? And the doctor had to remind him if he tries to change, to morph into her idea of what her father He'll is, never be happy. he is, will never be happy. And he is, yeah. it's going to have a root of resentment. Right. To and to it. And yeah, I, I agree with the doctor in that uh, analysis. And, you know, I, I just wonder where she gets off doing this and, and then has the audacity to compare, you know, her image of masculinity in, in the form of her father with her 
image of masculinity in the form of her husband. But wait a second. Before that, she said that Shaq, um, what they were doing some things, and he was picking moving boxes, and mm -hmm. she thought that was sexy. But when asked the question, she reverted. Did you notice that? No man is going to feel comfortable with that. I don't think Shaq is an alpha male because, um, you know, he doesn't come across like that. Shaq is a caregiver. He's laid he's, back. He's laid back. He is going to observe and take care of you. Right. That's who he is. And nothing's wrong with that. So when she starts hemming and hawing, of course, he's upset with that. So later on, when the doctor leaves, they go into the... Um, they do some sort of uh, sexual thing with um, her trusting him. And he puts a blindfold on her, and she's not comfortable with that because of she likes to control everything. So he is speaking, and she has to follow his voice to come to him. And he kept asking her, do you trust me? And that will be no, but we're going to be Kristen and pretend that it's a yes for her. And eventually he takes something and wraps her up. And she likes she likes the feeling of being tied up, I imagine. Yeah, uh -huh. that's about right. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh my god, this is this this girl is a walking contradiction. She says one thing or assumes one personality, and then um, she's something else in another uh, format. How about also? So, no wonder he doesn't know what to do. He's trying to get on her page, but every time he tries something, she pivots back. Yeah, it's like it's like he's trying to get on her page, but when he finally feels like he's gotten on the page, she turns it she to turns another. It. Because the, the 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 pause about masculinity was to check him for her him not following her program as this conversation with Dr. Pia began. Right, and she tries to justify it with this half assed notion or explanation about what, what's attractive to her and, and and how she considers that, you know, masculine and masculinity right. as right. part of her definition of masculinity. Because based on what she said at the after party, if she wants to see Shaq carrying stuff and lifting stuff and uh, and uh, fixing stuff. They're not living in an apartment where things need to be fixed because someone has that job covered. Um, they just need to pick up the phone and call. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so what exactly does she want? What does Kristen want? I she don't wants know. her damn way at all times and is willing to do and or try and say anything to get that. Maybe Kristen has point. that freaky deaky stuff. She likes to be dominated by a man and she wants Shaq to dominate her because when they went into the bedroom, she was upset and wanted to talk about it. And she, of course, she did her thing. So no other conversation is needed. And she tried to shut him down. Right. Uh, because that's what that's how, what they do. Mm -hmm. She wants one thing. He doesn't conform. She punishes him. Mm -hmm. Then when in this nagging posture, she wants to shut down, and they go back and forth like that. Right. So he can he he doesn't have any kind of balance in this relationship. Right, which is one reason why Shaq. I don't think is happy in their marriage. Yeah, they asked him, are you happy? And he said, yeah, I'm happy. No, you're not. You cannot be happy. The woman said on national TV implied that you were not masculine. You were not. Yeah. And he also said that... He How would you feel if I said that you were not a masculine man? Offended. Yeah, offended. I would think offended. so. That's how I would feel. And I would, and I would so. have some words. I would have of some course. words behind that. One of the things that I think was a little disingenuous that came from Shaq was that um, he did say that he was grateful, he was grateful to be married. To be to married. Some, yeah. But my thing is this. How could you be grateful to be married to someone who you are not fully happy with that you just admitted? 
that you just admitted to. His that, relationship is on shifting sand. Right. <laughs> and may, some people might it's say quicksand. <laughs> yeah. Some people might say Even quicksand. better. The more he crawls, the deeper he goes. Sinks, the deeper he sinks. Because this is this is the acid test for Brother Shaq. While he was a wing, and he goes to this conference that she initially agreed to go, but then she changed it up. And he came with his little petty thing, oh, you're out in the streets. She ain't out in the streets. But what she is doing is planning a family barbecue while he's away. And who's attending the family bar barbecue? Daddy. Big daddy that no one has ever laid eyes on. So she has... She plans and executes and attends a barbecue while Shaq is away, so he is not able to meet the father that she holds in such high esteem. Make that make sense. And wants to wants him to kind of emulate without make, having ever met. Make that, that make sense. If the thing is to plan a family barbecue, wouldn't you wait till he comes back? Of course. To have that rolling or what have you? Of course. So what is she saying to him? Hell if Quick I know. Hell if I know. Quick sand. And then she she blames it on him. She mm -hmm. projects that on him. Right. But meanwhile, she's trying to control the narrative about both of them. Because if initially, when you ask her any question, oh, we're doing fine, we know that is not true. To me, she's self-sabotaging at, at not only her expense, but also her husband Shaq's expense. No, I, I think this girl has a little deeper kind of... Um, thing going on with her mentally because she knows what she's doing it's I'm not like she, she didn't know she's pretending she, she knows what she's exactly doing. what she's doing never mind who he is exactly because to me that's the foundation of masculinity it's yeah it's it's what you do and 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 all that but the air of uh, the air of who you are and the energy that you exude is the foundation of that right so i mean uh I, I know in the past we had situations where when we moved and I was in a, a new job and something happened on the job that the next day I you were sitting there waiting on me to go to the job and you signed up. I was first in line and there was nobody else and there wasn't going to be nobody else. So I always, And I was glad to do it. And I, and I was looking forward to doing it. I always, the got, fitness. I always got to be careful. What I say to you. That once before with a job, uh, I had a colleague accidentally call you. Yeah, and, and yeah, say yeah, something. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I found out about it, I got in his ass. And he was apologetic and, and said so, didn't he? Yeah, he called me <laughs> and, you know, and was, what he needed to yep, do. And I was standing right there when he did it. Anywho, I just think any woman who um, sort of like casually um, implies that a, a man, uh, particularly her husband, is not masculine, um, she wants to get in another situation altogether. Well, this is not a relationship she wants to keep or hold on to. Well, okay. Well, you don't have to tear somebody else down to justify why you're getting out. We've seen that before. If it's all about her, she's not going to be concerned about how she's coming off because when she goes on the after party, you know, um, again, Keisha is just throwing her these softball stuff that I, I got to look at Keisha sideways because she she has one thing for the woman and another standard for the men and none of it makes sense. Well, I, I will say this. I think Keisha should have in the after party delved a whole lot more sincerely into this whole notion about masculinity. Okay. And, and how Kirsten in particular just completely botched that. Right. I just think that uh, that Kirsten, she does not and is simply not interested in having a clue about doing anything other than what she wants uh, to do and what she hopes to get as part of this effort uh, to be married. She looking for a high roller? I say go for it, girl. Leave Shaq alone. Yeah, so finally, uh, the ladies gather in a women's bar. And the fellas gather at a uh, baseball stadium to talk about how their relationships are going. Right. And from my end, Shaq, uh, he was 
kind of candid with the fellows and saying that he the, the, wasn't necessarily the happiest, but yeah, they were, you know, they were uh, doing better with communication and, and all that. And, and, but there's still some issues to be resolved. And with her in the coffee, mix, the mixology mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. what did she have to? No, add? That, that's your that's your part right there. No, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna pass that off on me. Your girl, no, no, that was a hen party. So. Can I? Can I just um, you know, just sidestep it if you want to by saying she ain't had nothing important to say. <laughs> you see. You did it for me. Thank when you. I said I wouldn't. Thank you. When I said I wouldn't, right? Thank you very much. That's time I could probably get back. And I'm going to take it. Go ahead. Have a good one. We out. Blessings always and forever. Happy Easter to y'all, too.